Well, happy, it's a Friday here on the rainy east coast of Canada. Put on my best coveralls. Today, we're gonna to be doing both sides, rear springs and rear shocks on our 2013 Pathfinder. It is 2021, we're in the middle of this pandemic thing. And I have done more auto repair this year than I can, like wheel sensors and full front end on my truck and a timing chain on my truck and a couple of front, uh, what were sway bar links on this. It just feels like there's no end. It's the weekend, which means it's auto repair time. So I'm here, I'm in my, what we call a garage. It's more of a shed that would hold three or four cars if it didn't have so many other things in it, but it's keeping the rain off my head that's falling right now. I should say this, this is not an instructional video. I could tell you that the bolts are 18 mil and 13 mil. I could give you part numbers for stuff. I can teach you how to hold your vehicle up so you don't hurt yourself, which is important to know if you're going to do this. But really all this is, it's just a little bit of encouragement to say, hey, every video I see online, which are super helpful, I've watched some to learn about this job. You should do the same, just not mine. But every video I see is made by somebody that really knows what they're doing, really loves working on cars, super passionate about it. Here's the thing. I don't really know what I'm doing. I know a bit. I've been working on my own vehicles for a long, long time, mostly because of necessity. I don't even really love it. I just need to do it. So if you just need a guy to blab at you that says, hey, if you've wrenched on something before, you can probably manage if you got the right tools. Be safe. Don't really take this as instruction. Be smarter than I am. But uh, this is just me saying you can do it. So. We're going to get this held up and some jack stands under it and I throw the wheels underneath the rocker panels just so it won't fall on me if everything goes to snot. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get that done and then I'll show you the job we're actually here to do. All right, we're here on the driver's side. We're going to do both sides, hopefully tonight. I'm just going to show you what we're going to do. i got a wrench right here on there. It's 18 mil if it matters to you. And as a side note, the most common metric size to be left out of any set is 18 mil. So you might wanna check your tools before you decide to break into this. We're gonna get that bolt off. I've got a jack under it to support the weight and we're gonna let it down. I'm also doing the shock while I'm in here. So there's another 18 mil bolt right there that we're gonna go ahead and get off. This one has a welded nut on it, but this nut is not welded. So we gotta hold it. I'm gonna to try to break it. I've got some air tools, they're cheap. Um, Mostly because I do this to save money. So if I buy too many tools, I don't save any money. Uh, as opposed to doing it as an excuse to buy tools, which would imply that I enjoy it. Uh, you don't need air tools. I did it for a lot of years without them. But I'm going to try it with those because it often makes it easier. Okay, we're all buttoned up. We did one side. It's Friday night and I'm tired. So I didn't show you much of how it was done. Because, well, I'm forgetful and task oriented. We did this side tomorrow in the morning when I feel like it because it's the weekend we're going to do this side which is actually the side that has the problem. I'm going to show you what prompted this repair. We had a noise it got real bad this week. This is the shock on the passenger side. The bushing is gone. See how that moves? You might be able to hear it. That is the noise that we're hearing. So I figured if we're doing that it's a 2013, it's pretty tired. We might as well do the springs and shocks on both sides. There you go. Well, here we are. It's Saturday morning, which means I'm continuing with my weekend tradition of working on something that doesn't work. Uh, back at the 2013 Pathfinder, we're gonna do the passenger side strut shock rather and spring on the rear which is actually the problem that got me into this to begin with i just did the other side first because i don't know it felt easier and i was avoiding the problem and it's the weekend and didn't want to overexert myself but i'm gonna go ahead and get this lifted up toss the tire probably under the hitch just in case you know everything goes bad it can't go all the way to the ground get some jack stands under it and do this side i didn't really show you much about the other side maybe i'll show a little more this time but as always it's not an instructional video. Uh, you don't have to watch my videos long to know. I don't really know what I'm talking about. In fact, the first vehicle I worked on <clears throat> was our first vehicle. It was a 1995 
gas Volkswagen Jetta. And the first major repair I did was the rear shock. Um, well, because I had to, because I couldn't afford to pay somebody that. I had exactly the amount of money to buy the part and not enough to pay the labor. So I landed with a cheap set of wrenches and sockets. I remember my uncle going, do you know what you're doing? And I remember going, nope. And he said something to the effect of, well, don't die, which was very helpful. And that began my auto repair career. So I don't have a clue. Uh, you should watch other guys for instruction. My videos are just to say, you might be able to figure it out. Be encouraged. Do some research. Get a good factory service manual, by the way. You can get them for this vehicle online for free. You don't even have to pay for them. And that'll give you all your torque specs and all that stuff if you care about that. Um, I'm not going to give them to you because I'm not going to be blamed for uh, your mess, basically. That's how that works. Um, but get one. They're invaluable. Spend some time reading them. Watch some videos. You can probably figure this out if you're set up to do it. All right, so as you can see, we got it lifted up. The wheels are off. Threw a rug down because I got this dirt floor. That's how I roll around here. And if I toss an old carpet and drop something, which I will, then I can find it. You can hear the air compressor leaking in the background because, well, we're fixing a car today, not an air compressor. So that's probably tomorrow. Um, we're going to have a look and see what's wrong. But here's what brought me in here. I'm not sure why it's doing it. But this will not move right now. But when there's weight on it, that will move back and forth. So we're gonna go ahead and put some tension on this, see if we can get it to move and see why. So now, I don't know if you can see this or not in the video, but this right here will move. The bushing is bad. And that's creating a horrible thunking noise when we're driving down the road that has my wife worried that the wheel's gonna fall off. Now, I told her all sorts of horror stories about what could happen if that went bad, but the wheel falling off probably isn't one of them. Somehow she didn't find that comforting. So we're gonna change this. I don't know if you can see it, but we're gonna change this spring. Gonna pop those out, let everything down. Two 13s up in here that'll let it come apart and put it all back together. That is the goal. So we're gonna get to it. Okay, while well, you listen to that air compressor leak, we'll show you what we're gonna do. We got those bolts out, so everything's free. We're gonna take this apart. I feel like I should explain the Metro cards and the Tim Hortons card that you can't see here. So there's these fancy little push-on fittings that hold that inner fender in. And my inner fender's got a big hole, and I haven't been able, actually three big holes. And I haven't been able to find a replacement inner fender that I don't have to give up a kidney for. So, um, I took a couple Metro cards that I had from some trips to Manhattan and I used them to fill the hole and they've been there for a couple of years. Every time I take the wheel off, it makes me smile. So what we're gonna do, I grab this right here, it's all loose, pull it down, get the top free and out it comes. This is the problem right here. I think that's on camera. It's not supposed to do that. I, I think you probably know that, but it's not. And uh, it still hasn't fully returned. So as the transport goes by, what we're going to do is we're going to take this mount that looks to be, you know, okay-ish off of here, put it on our new strut, our new shock. I use the wrong words, but I don't really care. And then we're going to put that right back where it came from. That's the plan. A little penetrating oil. Also, we're going to grab this spring right here. Hopefully without damaging the other side of that arm. We did it. Pull that out. What other guys will tell you is the flat part of the spring goes on top. The not flat matches up to this, which will match up in this arm down here that you can't see. And away you go. If you get yourself a factory service manual, it'll also tell you that this tab, or it calls it a protrusion A right there, goes toward the outside of the vehicle is what they say so you put it on and you twist and there you go if you get under there you'll see how it works all right we're gonna go get our new shock ready okay okay i'm just gonna take a quick moment and show you where we're at here if your eyes keen the camera's good we got a spring it's new 
it's in. It's not torqued in yet, but it's in place. It's ready to go. But you'll notice that the strut, which usually is here, is missing. Now, this is the strut from the other side. It's pretty wore out, but mostly intact. This is what's left of the strut from this side, because that nut right there will not come off, which seems right, because it's a Saturday and I need this piece. So I've called every parts store in my county, some that aren't, nobody's got them in stock, nobody can get them till Wednesday. And as I said, it's a Saturday, my family vehicle. So we cut that off, you might notice. We've been playing with it in a bench vise with a bunch of penetrating fluid and an air tool that's not really strong enough to do anything. And uh, I'm frustrated. So we're going to another shop with bigger air. <laughs> We are back from our little shop visit. I ran to my grandfather's house. I didn't take any video where he's got some more advanced take it apart tools, most notably acetylene. We got this apart, which is great. We're gonna put the boot back on it, put it on top of this, and put it in there where it goes. It, it went surprisingly well. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't optimistic, but the quickest turnaround I could get on a new part was Wednesday, and I figured my wife would want her vehicle before then. And uh, I'm running out of time, actually. I'm not going to get to finish this. So we'll be back together in a little bit. I told somebody I would help move a grand piano today because I'm a sucker for punishment. So I'm going to go do that and then come back to this job. Well, we're back from moving a grand piano because that's something you should do at least once in your life. The wind's howling outside. Pretty significantly, it's beautiful. The skies are blue, it's sunny, but man, it's loud. So all that's left, we're gonna torque this down, button it up, put the tire back on, move on with our life. That's the plan. And we're gonna call this job done. Oh, we're gonna take it for a drive because we probably should make sure that, you know, the wheels aren't gonna fly off. That would, that would be ideal. Um, but otherwise, Pretty well done for the day. If you try this one on your own, again, this is not meant to be an instructional video, just uh, you could probably do it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? Yeah, I don't wanna play that game. I guess bad things could happen. Get a good manual, watch some better instructional videos than this one, you can probably manage. That's that, it's all over but setting it on the ground and. Taking it for a drive, making sure the wheel doesn't fall off. So, we're gonna do that. Happy Saturday.